na chine ke na ke promi he nina onyo bo na nia na zopota onyo bo na nia bo opu ya nina bu ye na amen anyi we na ase eze ku pete nkosi na no tuto na ejama na nsopuru site na edige bimaru na edige ise 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 Welcome, fellow Biafrans. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are joining from. I say, may Chukwu Kika be my guide and protect you. If you're joining me from Biafra land, you're joining me from any part of Africa, Europe, America, Australia, or Canada, whichever part of the world you are joining me, I say, may Chukwu Kika be my continue to guide and protect you, secure you, and keep you safe. I'm very sorry for the disruption I had today. When I started the program, there were so many disruptions from all angles, as you know. We are always coming under attack. And most importantly, I was trying to make sure that it's going to be an interactive session. That was why I tried to post a link. If you check the comment section, you will see the link I post. In that link, I place that link so that people can come in. If you have any question to ask after I have made my introduction on the today's topic, if you have any question to ask, you have any contribution to make, you can just click the link and come in and make a contribution. That is why I try to post that link. So that link is for everybody to come in and make their contribution on the, on the comment section. You will see the link. I posted it there. So before ever we get into such uh, coming in and question and answers, I'm going to make an introduction. As you all know, in the, if you watch the topic I, was going to, I wanted to discuss, is about the situation of things, the lies that are unfolding, things that are unfolding today. A lot of things are unfolding. So many warnings that have been given to us about what is going to happen in 2022, they have beginning to happen. You see, if you can remember, on my last broadcast of last year, I still repeat it, and on the first broadcast of this year, I reminded us of what is going to happen in 2022. When we are talking about what will happen in 2022, some people think it's just uh, a propaganda. Some people think it's just a blackmail. Please share this video to all platforms. Share it to family and friends. Share it to the people who you know have questions to ask, have contribution to make. Share it to them. Let them come in and speak their mind. Say it and ask any question they want. I have a link there. You can click and come in. So on that very day or beginning of the year, I said it that this year is going to be a very tough year for those of us who are fighting for freedom. The Odudua people, the Biafran people, the Middle Persians, every indigenous tribe, those are people who claim to be freedom fighters. I'm talking about the genuine ones. This is going to be a very challenging year for all of us. And as you can see, a lot is beginning to unfold. Moreover, most importantly, that every indigenous tribe in the country of Nigeria is supposed to be awake in 2022. Everybody's supposed to be awake because something is about to happen. This is something that we have been warned about in the past. Our Supreme Master Nandekan will continue to warn us about this time that we are going into. This time, Master Nandekan have been shouting and crying, even because of this time. That was why Master Nandekan went to Igbo Congress in the United States and began to ask them for support. That time that Master Nandekan was talking about is now unfolding before your own very eyes. Some other people made the revelation. I'm going to play some videos to remind you of the events that are going to happen in this very year that we are in. They have already started. They have already started. And if you think it's just a joke, it is not a joke. These are things that are bound to happen. They are going to happen. Just like I told you, some people, we are still waiting for prediction from their pastors and reverend for 2022. But everything that is going to play out of 2022 have been told to us, have been warned to us by people who are well-meaning, people who care about you, who care about me. They have been speaking about the issue that is happening today. And today, you can see a lot of things are unfolding. So many things that have been warned about, so many things that have been crying about, they are today unfolding, happening before your own very eyes. I am going to play some videos to lead us into what we are talking about. If you are in that contraption called Nigeria, it doesn't matter if you believe in Biafra or you don't believe in Biafra. It doesn't matter if you believe in Odudua or you don't believe in Odudua. It doesn't matter if you believe on self-determination or you don't believe in self-determination. It doesn't matter if you claim to be believing in one Nigeria or not. Something is about to happen. It is no longer a joke. Something is about to happen. It has started. As you know, already the northern part of Nigeria is in the hand of terrorists. And everything that is going to happen in the year 2022 against the indigenous people of Nigeria is starting from the north. That is where they are starting the attack. 
and it's going to continue to unfold one after the other, unfolding one after the other. When the warning was given, far before this 2022, people thought it was a joke, but today you can see it. In order to put the record straight and set your mind on what is happening, I am going to play some videos to direct us on what we are heading into. It is not well. It is not well with anybody that is living in the country of Nigeria as a stand now. If you are one of those who have been on very, very constant on media, seeing what is happening in media and following up, you will agree with me if you have seen what has happened in Afghanistan, that everything is possible. Afghanistan was in the hand of the United States. United States, we are holding Afghanistan. We are holding Afghanistan with their soldiers and all their military minds. But what happened? The Taliban took over. Within space of some few minutes, within space of some hours, the Taliban took over everywhere. And almighty United States ran away from Afghanistan. The same thing is about to play in the contemporary of Nigeria. The same scenario is about to play in the contemporary of Nigeria. And these things are going to happen in 2022 if care is not taken. That is why you have to stay awake. This is not a time to sleep. And why you have to be much, much concerned, mainly those of us who are Biafrans, you have to be much, much concerned because our Supreme Amazon Land the Kano is in the hand of the DSS. This is the man who has been holding her back the hand of time for them. Mazen Nandekana have been holding back the hand of time, making the ginger weed not to advance, making the ginger weed not to advance to the southern part of Nigeria in particular. But today they have succeeded in kidnapping him from Kenya through the help of some saboteurs in the southern part of Nigeria, mainly in Biafra land. Through their help, Mazen Nandekana have been kidnapped and today he is in captivity. Even as we are fighting head on to make sure that Mazen Nandekana is released, some people are still sabotaging it. Today, I'm going to reveal to you and show to you, if you are sleeping, I'm going to remind you, it's not even a revelation, this is a reminder, to remind you what was said about 2022. What is going to happen in 2022? We are going to start this program by playing the video of our brother, Obudah Melafia. And I must tell you, Obudah Melafia is from Southern Kaduna. This is a man who has made some revelations about it that happened, and eventually, they killed him because of the revelation he made. Because of this very revelation he made, that I'm going to play for you, that was why they killed Obadiah and Elafia. And today he's dead. And people seem to forget. He told us things that is going to happen in 2022. And today, they have started. Let us try and watch that video of what Obadiah and Elafia warned us about. From there now, we can now go into the detail of the program. Then, Meanwhile, as we are going, if you have any contribution to make, you can come in and make your contribution. Let's watch this video. Which is, it, which, which is it for you, Dr. Badaya? Do you think the government is unwilling or unable to protect the people of Southern Kaduna? In fact, it is not only unable, it is unwilling, and we have good reason to feel that they are part of and person of the killers. Let me make some revelations to you. That's a very big al that's a very big allegation, Doctor Obadiah. The government is part and parcel of of the killers. Yes. That, that's big. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How would the government just say, "Oh, it is revenge killing" and so on? Then you leave it there. Oh, because it is revenge killing and so on and so forth. The body language of this administration, the body language of the state government, mm -hmm. shows clearly that they have a hand in the killings. No doubt about it. Because, you see, General Abacha, hmm. and people don't give him his due. Do you think you would have tolerated such nonsense? And let me make some revelations, because some of us also have our own intelligence networks. Okay, okay. We have met with some of the bandits. We have met with some of their high commanders. One or two who have repented, they have sat down with us, not once, not twice. They told us that one of the northern governors is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram and the bandits are one and the same thing. They have a sophisticated network. Mm -hmm. During this lockdown, their planes were moving up and down as though there was no lockdown. Moving ammunition, moving logistics, moving money and distributing them in different parts of the country. They are already in the south, in the rainforest of the south. They are everywhere. 
they told us that when they finished these rural killings, they will move to phase two. The phase two is they will go into the urban cities, going from house to house, killing prominent people. I can tell you, this is the game plan. By 2022, they want to start a civil war in Nigeria. I hope you heard him very clear. That man that gave that revelation has been killed, Obodai Melafia. You heard him very clear that in 2022, that they are going to start a civil war. And if you think that it's a joke, you better think again, because it has started. It has started. The killing has started. The plan to project to civil war has started. Afghanistan is playing out before your own very eyes. For those of you who are still sleeping, this is time you have to wake up. This man that just spoke now is Obadiah Melashia. They kill him because of this revelation. Because of this very revelation I played for you, I'm going to play it again for you to know what is happening, going to happen in 2022. This video is out there, but some people seem to turn blind eye to it. They turn to the joke. But this very revelation that you have seen, it is playing out today in your own very eyes. It is playing out today in your own very eyes. And the government you think that will protect you, they don't care. They are pretending as if they don't know what is happening. But a lot is really happening before your own very eyes. And today, I am going to play for you a video of invasion of a military institution in Borono State. This video I'm going to play for you happened today, not yesterday. Something that happened today. The takeover of the contraption called Nigeria have begun. But you ask yourself, why are they not, why is it that the government are not worried about it? What is it? You saw that view. You see, when we tell you that the Fulani Caliphate, the Fulani Janjaweed are active and doing everything possible to take over Nigeria, you think it's a joke. The video short clip you just saw is something that happened today in Borono State. And you can hear them. They are speaking Fulani clearly. What they are speaking is Fulani. Moving forward to take over Nigeria by all means possible. Some of you are still sleeping. You are still sleeping. You think it's a joke. You think it's a joke. Maybe you have to rethink again. In 2022, I've told you, it is not a year to sleep. It is not a year to sleep. I want you to listen to Ubudaya Melafia again. Clearly, this man, they lost his life because of this revelation. Hear him again. Which is, it, which, which is it for you, Dr. Badaya? Do you think the government is unwilling or unable to protect the people of Southern Kaduna? In fact, it is not only unable... It is unwilling, and we have good reason to feel that they are part and parcel of the killers. Let me make some revelations to you. That's a very big, al that's a very big allegation, Dr. Obadaya. The government is part and parcel of, of the killers. Yes. That, that's big. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How would the government just say, oh, it is a revenge killing and so on? Then you leave it there. Oh, because it is a revenge killing and so on and so forth. The body language of this administration, the body language of the state government shows clearly that they have a hand in the killings. No doubt about it. Because, you see, General Abacha, hmm. and people don't give him his due. Do you think you would have tolerated such nonsense? And let me make some revelations, because some of us also have our own intelligence networks. Okay, okay. We have met with some of the bandits. We have met with some of their high commanders. One or two who have repented. They have sat down with us, not once, not twice. They told us that one of the northern governors is the commander of Boko Haram in Nigeria. 
Boko Haram and the bandits are one and the same thing. They have a sophisticated network. Mm -hmm. During this lockdown, their planes were moving up and down as though there was no lockdown. Moving ammunition, moving logistics, moving money, and distributing them in different parts of the country. They are already in the south, in the rainforest of the south. They are everywhere. They told us that when they finish these rural killings, they will move to phase two. The phase two is they will go into the urban cities, going from house to house, killing prominent people. I can tell you, this is the game plan. By 2022, they want to start a civil war in Nigeria. You heard him clear that in 2022, they are going to start a civil war in Nigeria. It has started from the north. From the video I played for you, this is something that happened today. This is something that just happened. They are taking over military base in the north. Taking over military institutions in the north. Where did you see the so anywhere? You saw them where they were shooting, taking over everywhere with the vehicles of the military. Without any repelling, nobody's repelling them. Without any response from anywhere. Ask yourself, why is it that the military is not responding to them? These are people who have just gone to buy Tucano jet or whatever they call. And this incident happened. They took over a military institution without any attack, without anybody fighting back. What does that tell you? The government of the Janjaweed, they are involved in terrorism in Nigeria and they are making sure that the Fulanese take over the contemporary call Nigeria. And as I have always told you, they have only one year, 2022. They have only 2022 to take over Nigeria. That is why they are going to fight in different fronts. Propaganda will increase. Killings will increase. Attack will increase. And it has started already. You saw the one that happened in the Boeing State. You saw the attack. You saw the attack where they killed our brothers and sisters in the Boeing State. Nobody came to their rescue. The same thing just happened in, Pla in Plateau State. The same thing just happened in Plateau State this week. The same thing. Killings are going on in Plateau State. Killings are going on in Plateau State. Full and these are killing people in Plateau State. Even as, as you're watching this video, no media is reporting it. They are not talking about it. As you're watching the video, they are killing in different phases. And they are coming down to the southern part of Nigeria. But ask me, why is it that the military are bent on destroying those who are defending themselves? Don't forget, I have a link there. If you have a contribution, a question to ask, click that link that I posted there in the comment section. That is a link in the comment section. Click that link and come in and make your contribution. Ask yourself, why is it that they are not fighting back? Why is it that the military that are busy disturbing and killing innocent people in the Biafra land, why are they not focusing on these very terrorists that are taking over the northern part of Nigeria? Ask yourself why. In Biafra land, they are busy killing our youths in Biafra land. Even as you're watching this video, they are busy killing the military, the Boko Haram military on their uniform, are busy killing our people in Biafra land. Meanwhile, in the northern part of Nigeria, the Boko Haram, in their original form and uniform, are busy taking over the north. And the government of Nigeria is not doing anything about it. Because Nigeria in the first place was not formed to serve any indigenous tribe. They are being placed to serve the British purpose. And it will benefit British more if there is insecurity in the contemporary core Nigeria. It benefits the colonial master more when there is insecurity in the contemporary core Nigeria. That is why they will never do anything. And the major agenda that they are pursuing, the full agenda we are pursuing, they are pursuing their own caliphate, to build their own caliphate in Nigeria and invite all their full enemies from all over the part of the world and settle them in Nigeria. They are not hiding about it. They have spoken about it on national television. A full and governor from Bauchi State have said it in national, on national television. People heard him say it. They are busy focusing on people who are protecting their own brothers, protecting their friends, protecting their family. They are busy 
or fighting against people who are making sure that there is peace in their area. The Boko Haram in uniform are busy killing them, destroying their lives. But meanwhile, the major terrorists that we know, the Fulani terrorists that we know, are still operating freely in the northern part of Nigeria, killing the indigenous people in the north, taking over, even taking over military base, taking over military institution without anybody fighting back. You saw the video I just played. Did you see any military fighting back? You saw how brave and how bold members of Boko Haram were. That was a military institution. Did you see them? A military institution. You saw vehicle they were taking over. Watch it again. The video you are watching is not an old video. This is something that happened today. Taking over military institution in the north. Did you see any Tokano jet fly, flying anywhere? Did you see any any reinforcement? Did you see any uh, any attack to fight back? They were handed over that very place peacefully. They have taken over every vehicle you see there, every armor you see in that very institution. They have taken over it. Those people you are seeing are members of Iswab, Boko Haram. They are the ones taking over in the northern part of Nigeria. There is no fight back whatsoever. No fight back. But in the southern part of Nigeria, they are busy fighting against the innocent people. And their military will never do anything. Their presidency, they are still pretending. And these people we have been emboldened. Remember in the recent interview that he was, the, the impost that was granted. In the recent interview that he was granted, you saw what he was saying. He was supporting this full and danger with he was still supporting them. They came and told us that they proscribed bandit, not knowing that they proscribed some group of, of gangsters. They proscribed some group of gangsters instead of proscribing the full and terrorists, full and terrorists, the yeti Allah sponsored full and terrorists that you are seeing. You saw them speaking full and When we say it, sometimes it's a hate, it is not a hate speech. This is the truth. Do you see them? You had them right. They were speaking full and ease. The video I also played yesterday, you will see them. They are also speaking full and ease. The ones that I showed yesterday, they were still, these are terrorists mounting a roadblock. They are mounting a roadblock. Terrorists mounting a roadblock in open. They are not hiding it. Mounting a roadblock and collecting money. I played the video yesterday. Let me show you the video again. Mounting a roadblock and. Another
What you saw there are Fulani terrorists. You see how brave they are. This time is not in the forest. They are not hiding in the forest. Neither are they hiding in the bushes. They are not in the desert. That was a city. They are in the city, mounting a roadblock in a major road. You saw a car pass. This is what is happening in northern part of Nigeria that will not be shown to you in their conventional media. The government will not talk about it. They will not show it to you in their conventional media. Each time you listen to a conventional media, what will they tell you? They will tell you that it is well everywhere. The government will be pretending that everything is well, telling you that there's no problem in the north. Even when they know that the northern part of Nigeria have been handed over to the terrorists. You see how bold they are. They are not hiding. They are not hiding. They are standing in the open, challenging the government in the open. Did you see any Tukana Jordan anywhere? Did you see any attack against them? See how brave and bold they are with their phone and everything, rejoicing and singing. And you saw them. What are they speaking? They are speaking Fulani. So when we talk about the Fulani terrorists, some people will come and tell you that you are preaching hate speech or you are saying this is not a hate speech. There are videos to back every single accusation we are making against the Fulanis. It is not a hidden thing, but they will try to change the narrative on daily basis. If you are living in the southern part of Nigeria, this is the time for you to open your eyes. Open your eyes wide because the war that we have been warned about is coming. It is here. The war that we have been warned about for a very long time, the war is here already. Ask yourself, how prepared are you to face these people? How prepared are you? We have been pretending, even when some of them carelessly send out the message. Even when some of them shamelessly send out the message, even when they come to the media, they reveal some secrets unknowingly. Still, some of us do not digest those secrets. Some of them, some of them who are in the northern part of Nigeria, who feel a little bit concerned when they talk about it on, on conventional media, some of us don't take notice. We are busy following the propaganda of the government through their conventional media, pushing all manner of lies. I want you to listen to what Sheikh Hussani had to say to the government when Sheikh Hussani was complaining. Watch and listen to what Sheikh Hussani has to say. It's as if the president is talking about another country, not Nigeria. But if he's talking about Nigeria, the evidence of collapse and security paralysis is within his doorsteps, within his very state of Kasana. Uh, virtually now, bandits in the Northwest have become a state within a state. They have been able to establish governance structure in the sense that they don't just kidnap and extort money. But it has reached a point where they even install, according to reports, they install traditional rulers and install imams. It is important for the president to have time to have the numbers of his old friends and colleagues and neighbors and ask them of the situation on the ground. Because if you depend on your party, your loyalists, and the structures around you to tell you everything about your country or the people you are governing, you are most likely not to get the truth. They may only tell you what you like. If you pick up one or a collection of bandits, you will see them with tattered clothes, underfed, looking rough, and virtually no evidence of any material wealth with them. So you ask yourself, all these hundreds of millions and billions extorted as ransom, where does it go? There must be forces behind them that provided them these arms and that also collect the proceeds of this criminal's murderous activity. So 
as long as we don't go after the financiers of these terrorists and this bandit, we're simply scratching the surface and we are not going to achieve our goals. I hope you have heard him clear. That is former Senator She Hussain, a Northerner. That is the Senator complaining. But the only thing I want you to hear from him when he was speaking is that he made it clear that these Fulani terrorists that are called bandits or whatever they call them, that they have succeeded in taking over land where they install emirs and imam. They have taken over some areas where they are collecting taxes in the north. They by themselves install emirs and imam that are operating. And the only where you will see them, this evening, they say, when you see Isha Hussani talking about president, calling people to tell him, the president, the imposter in Asarok knows very, very well what is going on in the north. He knows who the sponsors are. He knows what is going on. The people who are supporting the Fulani bandit and whatever they did are the Fulani cabals themselves, including the presidency itself. When a revelation was made that members of Boko Haram uh, governors, you saw Obadiah Belafia said that it wasn't only Obadiah Belafia that said it. Someone else made that revelation. Someone, not only Obadiah Belafia, a security officer made that revelation. When you begin to see all these things, some people will just be just like you should say, Sheikh Sani. After speaking the truth of the situation, he is still trying to cover up for the president that he doesn't. The imposter in Asarok knows very well what is happening and the people who are involved. When you talk about the sponsors, the presidency is part of the sponsor because you remember when the presidency gave Mieti Allah one billion naira? Did you remember when the presidency gave the Mieti Allah a billion? Do you remember? Mieti Allah that you and I know that is the terrorist organization was given a billion. The presidency gave them a billion. Or even more than a billion. Gave them money. And they told you that they are stakeholders in Nigeria. And after seeing all this thing, you see people like Sheikh Hussani who cannot stand straight. He's still trying to cover up and be telling us about the uh, presidency not knowing our president, calling his direct friend. When he is supposed to know that presidency, they are part of and parcel of the takeover of the Nigeria and give over to the Fulanis. They are part of parcel of the takeover. These are the kind of people they used to deceive you. When you see Sheikh Hussani speaking, standing from the good points, at the end of the day, he tries to cover up for his people. That is how they speak. But we cannot be distracted because they have even made more revelation than you can imagine. When a governor in Bauchi State, a sitting governor in Bauchi came out to tell you that Fulanese are Fulanese everywhere. They are not even Nigerians. And their plan is to make sure that they bring Fulani from all over part of West Africa and settle them in Nigeria. A Fulani governor in Bauchi State made that revelation. He said it in a national television. It is not a mere hearsay. I am going to look for the video and play for you again to remind you. We are playing the videos to make it as a reminder in case you have forgotten where we are coming from. When you watch some of those videos, you will remember where we are coming from and where we are going so that you can sit up. Let me see if I can find the video so that I can play it for you to remind you the situation of things, where we are coming from, and what you are supposed to be expecting. Anything can happen at any time. To cultivate that culture in our people, while at the same time bringing the Fulanis in one fold and try to arrest their traditional uh, practice of moving from one place to the other. And that is very, uh, very big, a big, an uphill task. But I think we can communicate with them more. Because to them, they don't have borders from Cameroon to Nigeria. But that's the thing, Excellency. How do we ensure that those who will be participating in this federal government, largely funded program, will be Nigerians? Uh, in terms of the funding? No, in terms, in of, terms the of the operations. Operations. You say to bring in the Fulanese together. Well, you see, from you other see the issue well. of misconception. I see there is a lot of mistrust and misconception with regards to the Fulani man. The Fulani man is a global or an African person. He moves from the Gambia, from, from Senegal, and his nationality is just a Fulani man. And uh, as a person, I may have my relations in the Cameroon, but they are also Fulani men. I have relations because from the maternal side, I'm a Fulani man. And that is why we want to educate people. A Fulani man sees himself as a Bielsen. 
as uh, somebody come from the Niger Delta because he speaks the Niger Delta language, which you and I don't. And of course, we would have to just take this as part of our own heritage, something that uh, is, Niger is African and that we cannot just close the border and say the Fulani man is just a Nigerian or this. No. Uh, in most cases, the crisis are precipitated by those outside Nigeria. When there is a reprisal, it is not the Fulani man within Nigeria that causes it. It is that culture of getting revenge which is embedded in the, in the, in the tradition of the Fulani man that attracts reprisal from all so over the, the If the I understand world. it, does that mean that those Fulani men who are uh, maybe domiciled in other countries who move around, they can come into the country and this plan will accommodate them as well. Yes, that's what we want to do. But it has to be done through sensitization. Telling them you have to buy in in the project and you use the language, the culture is up to be able to convince them. Away from the mistrust where the whole system of transhumans or pastoralism is criminalized. Criminalization of pastoralism is the problem that we have with this, with this project. And it requires people with passion who understand them and who they believe in, people like us from that part of the country to say yes we have this because today there is no limit to the accusation that this and that has happened and it is the Fulani man who caused it there is no tribe that is not uh, that you don't have this uh, criminality in but certainly uh, the way Amana we do it is really exacerbating the crisis and the okay. problems w will there be any form of documentation of all the people that will be you know uh, you know, we'll yes, we are taking that. Uh, you know. Oh, yes, that is going to give Nigeria the opportunity to really have the best in terms of documentation in the demographics. Because, as I said, a planning man settles anywhere, anywhere he can feed his cattle. And so, if they are put in one place and they are made to understand that this is for to save them and their animals. They are, they are exposed to the vagaries of, 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 of the forest and what is going on, cattle rustling, killings and what have you, and that's why it is important for them to understand that staying in one place is, is good. And of course, in terms of the uh, best practice of carrying the meat, carrying the meat, the, the, the cows and the, the let's, do with, let, let's do with that security angle for a bit. Is there going to be, is, is the, this, uh, plan going to be a fenced and enclosure where anyone who comes in is secured so there is no one that can just come in from anywhere else no 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 it is going to be a colony and okay. a colony does not require a you, you will it understand not going the to reason, be a prison you will it understand is, the reason why people are concerned because of all the security issues that have been happening over time so if that these forests are there anyway if you don't occupy them and create a colony out of them, they create uh, places for the criminals. Mm -hmm. And today, that's why you have the Zambiza forest, because yes. it's not being utilized. But, but Your Excellency, much as yes, I mean, uh, they're fantastic. Uh, we have met a lot of them who are full and as well. But the concern, too, is why should federal government use fed resources for this country to accommodate uh, Fulani men who are not Nigerians. You see, as I said, we are already accommodating them. Do you delineate and then really know who is not a Fulani man from Nigeria? They are all Nigerians because I said their identity, their own citizenship is Nigerian, even though they have we have relations all over the world, all over the world, Africa, and so presumably they are Nigerians. I think you get me. That is, the, they are, that is the misunderstanding. They move from one place to the other, and they have relations, kids and kings in all the parts of the country, and even outside the country. So that is why our own population is fluid. You can certainly not say, this is the population of Nigeria. So these issues was raised in, these same issues were raised in NEC. Mm. And NEC admitted and accommodated all of these concerns and said, yes, we will do this. It, all these issues, there were some, you see, when decisions are taken, you don't uh, give a descending view. It is a decision that it should be done, and instead we'll look at its peculiarities and what it wishes. So for some of us, we think it's a very good thing. We can even say we will accommodate all the Fulani's in Bauchi if you want, <laughs> and then we'll be taking their meat and their products to you, and then we'll make a lot of money. Okay, to your 100 days. Yes. But I'm uh, no, 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 let's just transit, you know, maybe a little smoothly. Uh, how will this plan help the Bauchi meat factory? 
Thank you very much. We have a bulky meat factory that has become comatose. We had uh, stores and we have facilities all over the country to Lagos and Port Harcourt, and, but it was abandoned. And uh, we believe we have ranches that were owned by the government. That's why I said the private sector must come. And then, of course, all the facilities, water and the new grass that we are trying to develop using the Chinese technology that it doesn't die and then it boosts the, the protein content of the, of the animals. So we believe about meat factory can serve the uh, protein needs of the country by really preparing the meat and all the T-bones and whatever steak and what, that we can send to the hotels and so on and so forth. And then, of course, the animals are there. Uh, the full animal will know that he is getting value for money for his products. The only problem is the issue of making sure there is grass. Once the, pl the place dries in during the dry season, they will move. And that's why the issue of grassing and the rest comes in. And we need technology to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what, okay, we need to go to break. <laughs> I hope you have heard him. That is the sitting governor making a case for the Fulani people. On your own time, go and watch that video completely. Watch it carefully from beginning to end. Then you begin to understand the mess you are in as a Nigerian. Those of you who are still hoping for a better Nigeria, you will understand the mess you are in. That governor is telling you that any Fulani you see on the planet Earth, no matter where they are, that they are Nigerian and they have a right in Nigeria. You saw the person who is interviewing him, asking him, how are you going to use the money of Nigerian people? Citizens of Nigeria, how are you going to use the money of the citizens of Nigeria to sponsor Fulanis who are not Nigerians? And the governor responded, a sitting governor, a sitting governor, he said that any Fulani you see across West Africa, wherever they are, that they are all Nigerians. That it doesn't matter where they are. They are citizens. That is what the mess you are in. And you heard him saying that they are willing to open up the border for all Fulanese to be settled in the contraption called Nigeria. This is a mission they wish to achieve in 2022 by all means possible. Muhammad Buhari, the late Muhammad Buhari, and the imposter in Asoro is their last check they have. That is the last man they have to fulfill their mission. And they are pursuing it by all means possible to see that their mission is being achieved. To see that their mission is achieved, that is why you see them pursuing it. And let me tell you, the revelation of Wubudai and Melafia, let it continue to ring in your head every minute of the day. Maybe by special grace of God, tomorrow I will play the full interview of Wubudai and Melafia for you to hear from him so that you can be able to straighten your mind on what is coming. It is because of this revelation that they killed Wubudai and Melafia somebody from Southern Kaduna, who was making a revelation on what is going to happen in 2022, the war that they are about to unleash. They have started already. They have started already. I have just played a video for you of what happened in Boronu State today, not yesterday. The takeover of a military institution. Takeover of a military institution happening. Why they are boasting that they have to get a jet. Why they are boasting that they're going to kill any Biafran person that came out to talk about self damnation They are boasting to bomb Biafran. You see Hope Uzodema coming out to boast of bombing his own people. Hope Uzodema will come out and boast of killing Biafrans. He will boast of killing Biafran. Meanwhile, in the northern part of Nigeria, that was Borono State, you saw members of Boko Haram taking over a military institution without any attack and response from anywhere. No response whatsoever. Every military car you see there, every military land cruiser you see there have gone into their own hand. Every military armory have seen have been taken over by Iswap. Everything you see in Borono State. And the, military, the government don't care because that is what they want. Because they are fighting for the agenda of the government to make sure that they take over Nigeria by all means possible. But it is sad. The sad thing is that those of us who are from southern part of Nigeria, we are sleeping. We are not doing anything. Instead of us fighting along with our own people, instead of you that is an Odudua person, fight along with Odudua people and continue to stand on your self-determination to protect your people. Even though they hold Sunday Bowo, holding Sunday Bowo should not stop the struggle for Odudua. Let Odudua people wake up and continue to fight for self-determination. The same thing is applicable to Biafra. 
because our Supreme Master Nandi Kano has been kidnapped. You and I know that our Supreme Master Nandi Kano has been the person who has put a stop to the advancement. Mazin Nandi Kano single-handedly through his broadcast and his effort and the eight things he did on the ground have put a stop to the advancement of the Janjawi to the southern part of Nigeria. The establishment of the ESN was a stamp to their full movement. They couldn't move anymore. Thank you.